welcome to my channel, I'm Tara. And today I am gonna be doing a tutorial that deals specifically with how I mix my paints for the colored pearl cells. So I've had a lot of questions on um, how I, what my recipe is and what I mix with and um, what is the untinted bear that I'm talking about. I will show you all that. I will very detailed um, mix the paints with you with a tube paint and with a fluid paint so you know how I mix my paints. I go through very thoroughly um, consistency and what uh, the consistency needs to look like for the pearl cells. Um, and then I don't talk about the puddle uh, colors at all in this one, but if you go back to um, my previous video on how I mix my paints for pearl cells, I do very specifically talk about how I mix my paints for the Dutch pour, which is exactly the same as the puddles. So with that being said, um, I am going to go ahead and let you watch. It's kind of a longer video, so I'm sorry. If you don't want the tutorial part, you just wanna watch the, um, the little pour that I do that is towards the end, so just go ahead and fast forward. But um, there's a lot of good information in here, so if this is something that you want more information on, um, please watch it all the way through. I am available for questions, and um, if you haven't seen my dad's video, he just put it out right before me, um, go on over to DJ Fluid Arts. Um, he's been using a lot of the same mixtures as I have. So yeah, he's got a really cool one where he's throwing paint. So yeah, okay guys. All right, I'll let you go ahead and watch this one. Thank you again for being here and have a great day. I am going to show you how I have been developing these colored pearl cells that I've been doing a lot lately. So I haven't really came out with a specific recipe yet because I've been playing around with it so much. And to be honest, I still don't have a very specific tried and true for every single color recipe because as I have noticed that each color, um, the pigments are different. And so because their densities are different, then it may be necessary to add more um, of the um, satin enamels to maybe a pigment that might be a little heavier or um, a little thicker. So, um, now the recipe that I am gonna tell you that uh, works really good as a base, okay? So this is where a great starting point is. So the recipe is, um, and I'm gonna work in parts, but when I, when I do um, measurements for myself, I work in ounces, um, weighted ounces, um, not fluid ounces. Um, just because it's easier for me, I'm not great with math. So, um, I am going to work, tell you parts, but you can make this in smaller because of that parts, or you can go in bigger, um, than what I'm doing, but I'll show you in ounces basically. So, um, I use for my, grab it here. So this is what I've been using. Okay. For the... Um, the satin enamels. This is, if you look in here, interior satin enamel, the deep base. 7753 is the number. Um, so what's important about this is that it is untinted. So if you get um, like a pure white that has white in it, obviously, um, so you can get a medium base and that actually has a white tint to it as well. So I always go with the deep base because it has the very least amount of white in it. And I actually take the big can and I decant it into this little guy here because it's easier for me to pour with. So I just put it into here. Now you're gonna see this is very thick. Let me grab a stick. So this is, this is pretty thick. You can see that here. That shows just how thick this is, okay? So 
when you're working with this versus just the pure white um, satin enamel, this is a lot thicker, so you're gonna need more water. So I know you guys have probably seen my video where I show the ratios of um, how I use the, the bare um, satin enamel in the pure white to make white cells. So that is actually gonna take less water than this. And that's where I think, you know, uh, these this recipe is a little bit more challenging to get these cells is because, well, number one, I haven't perfected it yet. Um, and number two, it's just a thicker paint. It's gonna need more water. And you wanna make sure you're using um, good quality paints uh, like uh, Amsterdam or a Golden. Um, these are very highly pigmented paints and they can handle quite a bit of water. So that's what I like to use with this technique. Um, or PBO is another one that I use a lot. Okay, so um, so first of all, that was the, the bare satin enamel. Um, interior deep base goes in there. Then of course I have my US Floetrol. And this is what I've been using lately, is the Golden Color Pouring Medium Gloss. Um, I get these by the gallons just because it's a little more cost effective to do it that way. But that has actually um, made me eliminate the Liquitex Pouring Medium and the um, Golden GAC 800 because um, I, I did talk to the company and they said that the golden color pouring medium is basically has the same um, golden GAC properties inside of it, but it does have a little bit more. It's got a gloss agent in it, um, but anything that the, the uh, GAC 800 does, the golden color pouring medium would do as well. So it's um, it's gonna level, it's going to be a low crazing extender for pouring acrylic colors. It's gonna keep your colors from cracking because when you use the satin enamel paint, um, it dries at a different rate than typical um, acrylic pouring mediums. So you need a GAC 800 or a golden color pouring medium in there or, or another um, specifically uh, pouring medium, um, Liquitex pouring medium, um, need to be in there to keep the paint from crazing or from cracking. Now, the reason that I like to use the golden color pouring medium is that it eliminates the need for me to put a specific like Liquitex pouring medium and the GAC in um, separately. I can just use one. Um, this actually will keep it from cracking and it also adds in polymers to the paint to keep uh, the pigments bound together so that when you're adding in all this extra water to thin out the paints, those, um, those the, the pouring medium will actually keep those pigments bound together and it will handle a lot more water than if you didn't use that. If you just use Floetrol, Floetrol is not a binder. So it will help you to thin down your paints and um, it'll help leveling but it, it's not a binder like you would get in like a pouring medium, like a Liquitex or um, the, the Golden. So um, those are actually the three ingredients that I use now. Uh, I've tried to get this, make it a little bit easier. And then of course, water on top of that. So I'm gonna do a couple with you. And I use my scale here. And so my um, recipe is, four parts of the um, satin enamel, okay? Four parts is where I start. Then I do three parts of the flood flow trail, and then one and a half parts of the 
golden color pouring medium. So I just put some into this little squeeze bottle, make it easier for me to use. Same with my flow trial. I did straighten this. So I am going to go ahead and get a couple of cups here. So you're going to see here, I will measure this all out and you'll see how I come to where I am. I don't know if you guys can hear like a digging. My little dog is digging in the corner for something. I don't know what. Anyway, um, that's just him. So I'm going to do a couple with you. Um, and I show you how I use a tube paint and how I use a fluid paint to, um, measure and to, um, to mix this paint. So grab a couple of sticks here. So I'm going to first of all put in, so I'm going to do my four parts that I'm doing of the satin enamel. I am going to do um, four ounces. Okay. So actually, you know what? I see, I always, this is what, I always try to make sure to get the lip of this wiped off really good because otherwise you get goobers in your paint. I don't like goobers. I don't, to, I don't like to have to fish them out. So let's do four parts of this. And I'm just going to give it a quick little stir here. Not really necessary because it's not really breaking apart, but here. Okay. So four ounces I'm going to weigh out. A little past four. Woo. What a mess. Okay. Okay. So I'm actually gonna do this at the same time as how do you like my scale? It's pretty pretty messy, eh? Okay. I'm gonna do the same over here to these both these cups at the same time. Measuring out four ounces. Okay. Okay. Put the lid back on this and set it aside. Okay. So here we go, I got these two cups now. Now I need to add in, so I got my four parts in each cup of the satin enamel. Now I'm going to add in the Floetrol. So I need three, three parts. So that's going to be three ounces, three ounces. That's three ounces. I'm gonna do the same thing to this cup. Okay, three ounces. All right, so both of those are set. Now, um, I am going to add in the golden color pouring medium. I'm gonna add in one and a half one and a half parts, so one and a half ounces of this. And the purpose of this, again, is to keep your paints from cracking, crazing, and to bind them together, um, to keep them from breaking apart because of the thin consistency. Okay. I'm just going to zero this out again. And one and a half ounces or one and a half parts. Okay, so there we go. So now I am going to just give these a quick stir. Okay, just 
to mix them up. Let's move that for a second. Now, with the two paints, I usually will mix this up ahead of time like this. And then um, what I do is I get a little cup and I pour a little bit of this in with the amount of paint that I want to use. So with a two paint, um, we're going to have, so we have in here already, um, let's see, four, uh, seven, eight, eight and a half ounces of just um, medium at this point, right? So now we need to add in, I usually do a one to five ratio of pouring medium to two paints that I use, the Amsterdam or the PBO, because they're heavily pigmented and they can handle being stretched that far. Um, we are gonna be adding probably three to four ounces possibly of water to this um, on top of the paint. So I'm gonna put in two ounces, two ounces of paint on here, okay? So let me get, here, let's just stir this other one really quick. And I'm gonna grab another little cup just to show you what I do with the two paint. I don't know, sometimes people say don't beat your paint. I mean, it's gonna cause more air bubbles, but I usually let mine sit a little bit. Um, <laughs> kind of that's sometimes the best way to get mine um, stirred up. So let's get this back here. Now, I am going to just put in a little bit here, just enough to make kind of a slurry how you would with like a a um, uh, gravy or something um, so you can see that's not a ton of paint in there or medium so I'm gonna put that in and then so I'm using my two paint this time so two ounces or two parts okay so here whoop, I'm spraying I zeroed my scale out and now I am just going to put in two ounces of paint. Now you don't have to make the same amount when you do yours. You can scale it down if you're not doing a, a, a lot or a larger project. I um, tend to do a lot so I make up kind of bigger batches um, at a time and then I just get a container and I store it like I got these at the dollar store. So I store in these little guys. So so basically I'm just creating a little bit of a slurry. So if you don't do this ahead of time, sometimes these two paints will start breaking apart and they won't mix well and then you have to let them sit overnight but if you add in just a little bit of the pouring medium and get it a little bit um, mixed together, then you can add it to, you know, sometimes people don't wanna use, do it all at once. I just do it all at once. So I'm gonna take and put back in all of this, back into my cup. Scrape it all out. I don't want to waste any. I'll try and get as much out as I possibly can. Okay. So now I'm just going to take and I am going to stir this. So now with the two paints on this one, it's going to require more water 
than the fluid golden fluid paints so you just kind of have to start getting a feel for consistency um, I will I'm gonna show you right now how much water I'm gonna use I'm gonna weigh it out for you um, so you can see uh, measurement wise how much you are gonna you know most likely need if not a little bit more or less, you know, depending on if your flow trowel maybe be maybe is a little bit thinner, um, you might not need as much water. But with my experience with this, um, my water amounts, um, I I usually need a good amount of water. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna zero it out. Okay, actually, I'm gonna take a stick out first. Then I'm gonna zero out. Okay, so now I've got this. I'm gonna grab my water. I'm just using bottled water because it's handy for me down here in my basement. So, um, that's all that's in this little guy here is bottled water. So what I usually do is because I'm adding so much, um, I usually do about a half a part, two a part, um, mix it up, then see where I'm at, then another half a part, two a part. If I'm doing like this here, and I know it's really thick, I'm gonna do a whole part. So I'm gonna throw in one whole ounce, but don't do it too fast. You know, if you're only, if you have a smaller amount and you're using different, a smaller um, cup or you're, you're maybe taking these and halving or quartering the amount, then um, put it in um, like maybe a half a part or a quarter of a part at a time. Just pare it down according to how much you're going to be using. So I'm going to put in one ounce, which is one part, and then I'm going to stir. So I have it zeroed out and there's one ounce. So I mean, you can see like at first when you start stirring it, it's pretty like gloopy. And, um, but as you stir it, you're gonna see it'll, it'll smooth out. Oh, my dog is digging for something again. Okay, so Here's our consistency. We do not want any mound at all. We see there is a mound on a mound here forming. We don't want that. We want it literally to sink immediately. So let's go another ounce. And then stir it up. So I'm gonna predict it's gonna need probably four ounces of water or four parts with this, um, it just seems like with that deep base, it is a very thick base, so it's gonna need a lot of water, which is okay. We've got a binder in there. The, the paints actually, um, if you have a, a high quality paint, they have pretty good binders in them. Um, so it binds those pigments together better, keeps the vibrancy of the colors. So sometimes it pays to get a little bit nicer paints um, because in the long run, it's gonna go farther for you. Now, if I was using like a, a craft paint or um, even like a deco art paint, I would need to go probably like, probably four parts paint versus two or, or five parts to uh, my, my one part. So. Um, in the long run, you know, these paints may be a little bit more expensive to start with, but, um, but yeah, they will, they'll go a lot farther for you. And to be honest, Jerry's Artorama with the Amsterdam paints, they have pretty good deals on them, you know, for a, for a tube like this, I think they've been running like four and a half dollars, maybe US. So not terrible. Okay. So I am gonna look at the consistency again. Nope, I mean, it's getting better, but we still have a mound. Hoping you guys are seeing all this. So I'm going to do another ounce. Okay. 
Now, when you start to see that your cons consistency is getting to where you want it to be, don't put an ounce in each time. Scale it back, do a half an ounce or a quarter of an ounce, then check it again um, because you don't want to overdo it with the water. So, scrape the sides, get the bottom. Okay, so okay, we can see it's getting better. We still have a bit of a mound. So let's do another ounce. And, you know, to be honest, I've done this a lot, so I kind of know how much water to put in. But you can take it a little easier. You don't have to do full ounces. Um, you you can just put in smaller amounts if you're nervous about maybe putting too much water in or whatever. Um, oh, my dogs are going to start barking. Sorry, dogs are barking and hubby's at work. So I might have to endure them for a second. I yell at them, but my husband says that me yelling at them is worse than them barking. So maybe they'll just stop barking on their own. Well, they're gonna come down. No, no barking. Guys. Hey, hey, leave them alone. No bark. No bark. Hi, hi, hi. No barking. No barking. Okay, go lay down. Okay, so the consistency is definitely getting better. So you can see if I hold it about an inch above, it is leaving a very small mound, okay? And so I'm gonna do another like maybe half an ounce and then I think I'm gonna be good. So when you have a stick this big too, so this is one of the bigger sticks, it's gonna have more weight on it. So it's gonna, so if you do this, I mean, it's gonna sink right away, yeah. That looks like the consistency that you want, but as it starts tapering off, you can still see a tiny mound, um, and I don't wanna see that. So I'm just gonna throw in another half an ounce. Oh. I think we're pretty close to 16 ounces here of paint and water so far. So there we go guys see that consistency you hold it an inch above and it sinks right away that's where you want it so it was about four and a half ounces of water to um, be eight and a half ounces um, of to the eight and a half ounces that we already had in there plus two ounces of paint so that gets, gets us right around 16, 15, 16 ounces. And that's what we make. So that's the base, all right? So, and you can see that two ounces of paint is still super vibrant and um, not breaking apart. It's, it's creamy, it's beautiful. So, all right, that's that one. Now I've got this here and uh, so this one, I am going to, I did mix it already. I am going to add in the Payne's Gray, okay, of the Golden Fluids. So this, I'm going to need far less paint 
and I am going to need far less water, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and for this one, I will measure it for you. For you, I will measure it for you guys, but I don't normally measure it. I just kind of go by the color and what it looks like. So, but I will go ahead and measure this. So I usually do two good squirts of it. So I'm gonna zero it out. Okay, here we go. So one, two. So that was one ounce exactly of paint. So I'm gonna stir it up, see where we are color wise go from there. Of course, it's going to be kind of lighter, but it does I just scrape the sides. can see that it is leaping a mound. The color is perfect. Okay, one ounce is perfect for this um, and the golden fluids. Okay, so we're still getting a mound. So we definitely need to thin it down. So this we probably will only need a couple ounces of water. Okay, so you know, I should make sure that I'm still filming. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to add in one ounce. Okay, and stir it up. See what happens. No barking, guys. No fighting either. Still a bit of a mound there. So we're gonna add another ounce. And I'm thinking that might be good, but. Okay. Now at this point, if you think that your color is dulling, um, you can always add in just another little squirt of the Payne's Gray. Um, I think I might just add a little bit. I don't think I need to, but sometimes I just want to double check, make sure that my colors are rich. Um, I'd rather it be richer than duller. So, um, but this certainly is handling just the one ounce. I mean, the color you can see is perfect. And consistency, we're almost there. Hope you guys can see this consistency. There's still a tad bit of a trace being left and it's not sinking right away. So I'm gonna give her another ounce or half an ounce. I'm give another half an ounce water. Stir it up. And I'm gonna just throw another little squirt in here. That was like 0.2 ounces, what I just threw in there.
Okay. So, see that, guys? It's sinking right away. And I've only got my stick about an inch above the paint. So that's how you know. If you hold it up like this, it's going to sink every time. Okay, gravity is going to pull it down. But if you do like this, and it's sinking, you're good to go. So our consistency is now, let me put these both here. You can see that tube paint, you're going to have to put in a little bit more tube paint, um, but your volume is going to be a little bit more. Okay, and you can see that sinking right away. And same here, our consistencies are exactly the same. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so a couple of things now that I just wanted to tell you is if you do this, you put in um, four parts of the satin enamel and you're finding that you're not getting any pearls because depending on the color, um, they can be finicky. You may need to add in more of the satin enamel, which when you put in more satin enamel, it means you got to put in more water, but you don't want to change the rest of the components. So you may be putting in maybe six, um, parts of the satin enamel, but you still are going to keep the three parts of Floetrol, one and a half parts of the um, color pouring medium and then two parts of the paint and then water okay so that's gonna stay the same the rest of it's gonna stay the same the only thing that changes is the amount of satin enamel that you put in okay you may need to you may find that um, that you're needing even more then six parts, then go to eight parts, okay? Or or seven parts. Um, it will eventually, but some colors need a little bit more. I have not gone beyond six parts um, with any of the colors, and that was, was with an Alizarin Crimson by Golden. It just was not wanting to float. Um, but I would start at four, and then, you know, just invest in some tiles, like some of those little square tiles, and do some testing. Test it out before you do a big pour, okay? You guys, that's the only thing I can tell you. I don't have any secret, you know, <laughs> no secrets here. It's just testing and trying, okay? So I have some people asking me if they can use Artist Loft Pouring Medium. And again, you can try it. I've never used it, but again, you're going to need more water with that because it's a thicker pouring medium. Okay. So it's, so this, this gloss, the color pouring medium, the gloss, it's a little thicker than the GAC 800 is. So it will take a little bit more water. You can always substitute back in uh, GAC 800 at one part and Liquitex pouring medium at a half a part. Okay. So that's where I get my one and a half parts is I just take those two, combine them together, and use one pouring medium instead of two, okay? So, all right, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a pour for you here, and um, and yeah, I, I really appreciate you guys being here. Uh, if you have any questions, please always um, ask. Uh, please leave them in the comments, or email me, or hit me up on social media, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. So yeah, I am always um, available uh, to get back to you with any questions that you have. It might take me a little bit depending on where I'm at in my day, but I'll try and get back to you the same day. Okay guys, I'm gonna go ahead and do a pour now.